Hello, welcome. Uh, I normally don't do videos like this because this is just not really my style of content. I try to focus more on my animation and stuff like that. Uh, but more recently, I've been getting a lot of questions on my Instagram uh, about how I get my SFM models to Blender. Uh, and so that's kind of what I wanted to cover in this video today in as much detail as possible. Um, and hopefully this will uh, help you out. So I didn't learn about all these techniques myself. Uh, it's from a much older video uh, from quite a few years back. I'll leave the link in the description below so you can go uh, check that out and support it yourself. Um, but as I've kind of found over the years, um, there are a few extra steps that you need to take in order to ensure that your textures are good and that, uh, and that your models come out right uh, and readable by Blender. Um, so that's that's kind of the purpose of this. There's There's generally a few extra steps that you need to take. Before we get started, you should know the programs that you're going to need in order to uh, fully do this. Obviously, you're going to need the Steam app and SFM, or Source Filmmaker, within Steam. Uh, you're going to need to download the program Noesis for your model conversions, and you're going to need VTF Edit for your textures. I will leave the link to all these in the description, uh, so you can find them and download them for yourself. And then, of course, lastly, you're going to need your program of choice. Uh, for me, this is going to be Blender, uh, but this uh, tutorial should work for uh, really any 3D software. You can use it for Maya uh, or Cinema 4D. Really, anything you use, this tutorial should hopefully work. So um, with that, let's just get right into it. Uh, one quick thing uh, I should mention uh, is that you should uh, set up a file to uh, properly export all your models. Generally, because I'm a little bit lazy, I put a folder on my desktop, usually named something that I'll remember. Um, but if you've got a proper directory for your 3D models, uh, a separate library, or uh, an, like an external hard drive, uh, then make sure that you set up a folder in there, and then you can follow back along with this tutorial. So once you have all of your programs downloaded and ready to go, uh, you can go ahead and open up Steam and navigate your way over to the Source Filmmaker Workshop. This is where you're going to find the models that you might want to use. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to be downloading this model here, the Tyrannosaurus Rex from Jurassic World Evolution 2. Um, as you can see, it's got a few different textures as they state here, and there are two models right here. Uh, so to get started, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hit subscribe, and that's it. Uh, I really wish it was that easy, um, but unfortunately there are a lot of extra steps that we need to go through. So what happened here when you hit subscribe is uh, Steam recognizes that you are ready to download this model, but nothing has actually downloaded yet. Uh, in order to have this model properly loaded on your computer, uh, you're going to need to open up Source Filmmaker. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Okay, so now that you got Source Filmmaker loaded, uh, this window should pop up here. Uh, it'll say download new workshop files and then the name of whichever model uh, you just downloaded. Uh, keep both of these checked, otherwise they won't properly download. And then all you're going to do is hit OK. So every once in a while, a window like this will pop up, uh, which states that uh, more than one subscribed workshop items uh, have the same file. This will generally happen if more than one model has a folder called materials. Um, and then it'll ask if you want to overwrite the existing file with a new one. You're just going to hit no to all and it should work. Sometimes you'll have to hit it a few times depending on how many models you just downloaded. Um, but once this pops up, you can hit OK and you can close out of Source Filmmaker. So for your next step, you're gonna to wanna to open up Noesis. Uh, this is how you're gonna navigate through your files and you're gonna find uh, the model that you wish to download and convert. Um, so I'm not gonna go through every single file, but I'll show you the ones that you need to go through here. Uh, you start off with this PC. It'll go to your Windows C, Program Files times 86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Source Filmmaker, Game, Workshop, and Models. This is where you're going to find all the models that you have downloaded. Now, if this is your first time uh, downloading something from SFM, uh, then you will 
likely only have a few folders here. Um, but for me, over the years of uh, doing this process over and over again, I have an entire library of models here. So what I'm going to be looking for now is the folder that contains the model that I have just subscribed to. Uh, what you can do to better navigate, especially if you have lots of uh, folders like this, um, if you stay on Steam, on the page that you have just downloaded your model on, it'll tell you the file directory of the model uh, so that you can find it easy. Um, now, as far as I know, it should be under here, uh, JWE2 carnivores. So now as you can see over in the 3D viewport here, uh, the Tyrannosaurus is loaded up. You can give a good look around, you can pan around, you can zoom in, doesn't really work all that well, um, but you can get a look, good look at it and make sure that it's the model that you want. Um, when you are fully satisfied that this is exactly what you want, uh, you're going to hit file and you're going to hit export. Okay, so the last program that you're going to need is VTF Edit. So you're going to open this one up. Uh, you're going to come up here to Tools and Convert Folder. Uh, now you've got this Batch Convert uh, window that pops up. Uh, and this is where you're going to change your uh, input, output, and your file type. Uh, so you come up here to Input Folder, and you're going to go through the same process that you did to find your models. Uh, so in this case, you're going to come to... Windows C, Program Files times 86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Source Filmmaker, Game, Workshop, but instead of going into your Models folder, you're going to go into Materials. Uh, this is where you're going to find the material textures for all the models you have downloaded. Uh, not all of them will show up. In this case, mine shows up right here, directly under materials. Um, if you can't find the folder that goes to your model, you're gonna come under this. Uh, uh, well, yeah. You're gonna come to this uh, models folder, and you're gonna open that one up, and it's gonna show you the folders for all the other models that you have subscribed. Okay, so in this case, I'm using the Jurassic World Evolution 2 folder, Tyrannosaurus, and hit OK. So now that's ready to go, you're going to come down here to your output, and you're going to put it into the folder that you have just made uh, with your model in it. So now you're going to come down here, uh, and you're going to change uh, your output type. Uh, so you have four options here, BMP, JPEG, PNG, and TGA. Uh, for my purposes, I'm going to be choosing TGA, uh, as that does work within Blender. Uh, and then once you're ready, you hit Convert. Now in case you decide to use PNGs, because they do tend to be in higher quality, uh, sometimes they will show up almost entirely transparent. Now I don't really know how to fix this, so I tend to stay away from PNGs. Um, some files work perfectly, others will show up with practically nothing. So just be mindful, you might have to do it uh, a few times with a few different types. Uh, I'd say give all of them a try, just to kind of see how each of them are, and you can determine from there which uh, format is your favorite. Uh, now after you've hit convert and the progress bar has reached the end, you're done. That's pretty much the tutorial. Okay, so from here the tutorial is pretty much done. Uh, if you already know how to properly import everything into uh, your program of choice, then you can stop watching. You've learned everything you need to know about converting. But I have seen a few people ask, especially on YouTube and stuff like that, uh, how to properly import FBX into Blender. Uh, and it's a really simple process, but I'll just kind of show you how to set up this model so that you're all ready for animating or rendering, scene layout, really whatever you want to do. Okay, so when you have Blender open, uh, you can go ahead and delete the default cube. You can come up here to import, and when you go down, you'll find FBX. Now, you may have to change this in your preferences. Now, back when I first started, FBX format wasn't automatically uh, enabled. Um, but it seems as though in the more recent versions, especially 3.0, uh, that it comes with the FBX format uh, import setting already enabled. Okay, so once you click on import FBX, you're going to go to your file, and you're going to open up the FBX model. Uh, now, Noesis kind of does this thing where it'll rotate your model 90 degrees. I'm pretty sure there's a way to change this within Noesis. You're going to have to play around with that. Uh, it's not something I've really messed around with, um, but it's a really simple fix in Blender. You just come over to the um, object transform, or object properties. Uh, you'll see rotation X is at 90 degrees. Just change that to zero, 
and your model should be properly imported. I'm going to up the scale of this model real quick, uh, just so that it, it looks a little bit bigger. Um, and you can see it there, it's got a lot of control bones. I'm just going to change those here so you can see the model a little bit better. And there you go, so your FBX is imported. Something you may find with Blender uh, is that when you switch over to your viewport shading tab, uh, your model will disappear. It'll blend right in with the background. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on with this. Um, not too sure why it does this, but the simple fix is by going to your render properties, performance, and select high quality normals. And this will bring your model back without the textures. This is once again, just a simple fix. This T-Rex only has one mesh. Uh, so it's quite as simple as just changing the base color to any one of these. In my case, I'm going to be uh, importing Tyrannosaurus 93. And there you go. So your model is now imported with a texture. Uh, there are a couple things that you can do to make this look just that little bit better. Blender's principled BSTF comes with the metallic slider all the way up, so you can just drop that down entirely uh, so that your T-Rex or really any model you use is not fully metallic. Uh, but of course, if you like the darker color of it, you can slide that back up. You can pull up the roughness a little bit so that it just looks that tiny bit better. Uh, I'm gonna drop that off a little bit there. Same with the specular, kind of make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, maybe we'll drop off that altogether. There we go. I think that looks about good. What you can also do is you can import the normal map that comes with most models on the uh, workshop, in this case, Tyrannosaurus Normal, and you can plug that into the normal map. So this is just a really quick and dirty way to do this. Um, I don't prefer doing it, uh, especially with the normal maps, because as you can see on the bottom here, Blender oddly separates their normals like this. So a quick fix that I like to do with this is instead of using a normal map, I will use a bump map, and I will use the diffuse texture uh, in the height node and as you can see now we get some proper definition now if you get a little bit too close you can kind of start to see uh, where some of the data is lost um, all of the pixels will show up as bump uh, data as well uh, if you get too close it looks a little gross so if you want to fix that you can just drop off the strength a little bit bring it back up if you'd like you can mess around with the distance and then drop down the strength I think that looks okay and there you have it one more thing I might do is I might put this into the roughness slot now most of this is pretty shiny and it doesn't look particularly amazing so you can drop down the specular a little bit but then you kind of have what the T-Rex looked like when it was in the rain in the first movie. So there you have it. That's how you convert your MDL files into FBX for use within Blender. Um, if you have any questions about it, uh, let me know. I can try and help out best I can. Um, if you know other ways of importing or converting models, um, great. Let me know. I, I will totally take a look into them. I'm sure there's a million processes that are way better than what I'm doing. But this is just how I've done it for the past few years. Uh, this is the way that I think works best in my case. Um, and yeah, just wanted to kind of share that. Okay, and that's it. That's a quick and dirty render that I just did uh, using that model. It's not perfect, obviously. There, uh, there would be a lot of things that I'd like to uh, change up about this if I were to make it a full scene. Um, but there you go. That's it. Uh, that's how you do uh, a quick and easy uh, MDL conversion so that you can use your models in Blender. Uh, hopefully this tutorial helped. Uh, let me know if it did. Hit subscribe for potentially more content like this. Um, and I'll, I'll see you all in the next one. Happy rendering.